Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. In this video, we're going to talk about how you can drastically reduce your screen time, waste less time and do more of the things that are important to you. My method for this video is divided into two parts. First, we will define the why, why we actually want to reduce our screen time. And then the how, methods, techniques and tips, how you can drastically reduce your screen time and free tools you can use right after you watch this video to actually do more of the things that are really important to you. And if you're new to the channel, my name is Michael and here we talk all about digital minimum minimalism, health, stoicism and much more. So if this sounds interesting to you, make sure to subscribe. So let us start with the most important step we need to take before we can actually tackle the problem itself. And that is the why. When I try to convince myself to do something, I often try to convince my inner child. That might sound a bit silly, but hear me out. Because for many people, this is a really powerful tool. Eat healthy, move more, do less of the harmful things and do more of the things that are actually good for us. Knowing something in theory and actually acting on it are two completely separate things. We know that we should do this, that, etc. to do more of the good things for us, to do less of the harmful things, but more and more our lifestyle feels more and more robotic somehow. Filled with way too many rules, we feel like we don't allow ourselves anything anymore and then there comes the point when we have enough and just give up. A major trigger for giving positive triggers up is not to have no motivation, but to not have an emotional why. Why do you actually want to have less screen time? In movies and in real life, we often see parents telling their children to eat more vegetables in dinner, for example. And of course they won't do it and hate it, no matter how often their parents tell how fit and strong it will make them. Children know it's good, but they won't act on it. So now please think for yourselves, why do you actually want to spend less time on your screens? If you're watching this video, then you probably want to reduce your screen time. But what are you actually missing out on? Statistics show that the average person spends 4 hours and 37 minutes on the phone every single day. That is one day a week, 6 days a month and 70 days or 2 full months a year. And seeing these numbers ignites this urge within me. It convinces my inner child to find reduce my screen time because most of us feel like we don't have time for anything nowadays but at the same time I see that I'm wasting so much time on my screens what would you do with an extra day a week with almost an entire extra week a month and almost two extra months a year I think it's just absolutely insane to see these numbers in the big picture think about all the time you spend on your phone that you could use for things that are actually important to you and maybe you will develop that strong urge to reduce your screen time as well so now that we have talked about the why let's Let's talk about the how. The technique that I use is very similar to the method James Clear uses in his book Atomic Habits, which is a really great book to build or break habits and here's how it works. In this video I will present you four principles that will make it much easier to use your phone less. And for each principle I will show you tips, tools and techniques how you can specifically reduce your screen time. But a flexible system that you can choose from and adapt to your lifestyle and your smartphone behavior so that it works for you. The first rule is to make it invisible. In the German language there's a proverb that goes like this that what I don't know won't make me hot yeah that kind of sounds better in German I guess anyways what it actually means is this if you don't see a trigger you won't get triggered if your phone is not around you and you don't notice it you will not use it and therefore have a lower screen time you can tremendously reduce your screen time with basically no effort if you just make yourself forget about your phone and the stuff on it so here are some tricks and tools you can use to achieve exactly that Put it far away. Simply don't have your phone around you no matter where you are. Start by just putting it out of your arm's reach so that you always have to get up in order to use it. This simple burden can have an immense effect because the power of our smartphones is that they give us an immediate dopamine kick and an immediate boredom cure at any time. We just grab in our pocket, get our phone out and get a little distracted. Statistics show that when you unlock your phone, this mostly leads to only 30 to 60 seconds of smartphone usage. So most of the time when you're using your phone, you're actually distracting yourself. So put it far away from you to undermine the dopamine seeking behavior all the time and the farther away you put it, the better. Imagine putting your phone in the opposite side of your house or even the garage or in the basement. Will you really go all the way and make such an effort just to scroll Instagram? Try to leave your phone at home as much as possible. This is a no-brainer I think and you start to notice your surroundings without constantly being distracted. And if this is too boring, grab an old style mp3 player and listen to some good music or a podcast when you have a walk for example. Then 
don't keep it in your pocket. If you must take your phone with you when you leave the house, try not to keep your phone in your pockets all the time, but rather put it in a bag or a rucksack or at the opposite side of your car. And exactly like I mentioned earlier, to increase the burden by putting it far away. Okay, now we did everything to build a physical distance to our phone and so that you don't reach out to it. But now we want to shift the focus and achieve that your phone doesn't reach out to you. Mute everything. One major problem is that our smartphones are ringing and buzzing all the time. You sit down to study and ping, you get a message. You eat dinner and ping, someone liked your post. This constantly grabs our attention and makes us be less in the moment. And what you can do against this is to always keep your phone on silent without vibration. And if there is in do not disturb mode, that is actually even better. Keep it activated as much as possible. And then deactivate all other features such as those LED notifications, always on displays and other features because they are only designed to grab your attention all the time. Then deactivate notifications. Then go a step further and eliminate the root of the problem. Deactivate 90% of all notifications. Let's be honest, most notifications are complete nonsense and not worth your attention. You probably don't need to be notified when somebody posted a story, when you get some random advertisement email or when your battery is running low and your phone is notifying you. Then batch notifications. Some notifications are indeed useful, but the question is whether you really need to be notified right away. Notifications like work or school group chats or notifications like your parcel will be delivered next day and so on are important, but you don't need to see them immediately. And so on are important, but they distract you from the current moment all the time. And what you can do for such notifications are so-called batching apps. Batching app is an app that collects all of the notifications by apps chosen by you during the day and instead of your phone buzzing and ringing all the time you will get all the notification at once in one single batch so that you get interrupted only once but see everything that happened during the day. I've used such apps for years and made me much less distracted. Use this batching app for most other notifications and for all the things that are really important right now, like friends and families, your work or so on, you can just leave them activated and be notified right away. And now you went from 100% of notifications to only the most important 1%. If we're already using our phone, it's really important that screen time triggers don't catch our attention. One thing that happens to many people is that we set up our home screens in a way that leads to using certain apps all the time. If you put TikTok on Instagram, for example, right in the front of your home screen, then guess what is going to happen? And the same actually applies as well to keeping every app in neatly organized folders. We develop certain swiping routes to always get those little dopamine hits. And what you can do against this is to make it harder for you to always subconsciously use those time wasters. Either you can try to hide apps that you know you use too much. Or what I think works better is to use a launcher or set up your phone in a way where you only search apps by typing them in a search bar. This way you always have to actively recall what you're looking for. Don't fall into the trap of routinely checking this and that app all the time, but we will get to that point later. Then we arrive at the second rule, and that is to make it unattractive. One of the main reasons why we constantly reach out to grab into our pockets, scroll our smartphones for a few minutes, is because there's always something to do. For smartphones, the media you consume was often finite. The book is over, you read the whole newspaper or the film just ended. But with smartphones and endless news feeds, never ending breaking news or the possibility to always communicate with anyone, there's literally always something to do. And there always is the opportunity for quick dopamine hits. If we, if we can make our devices less attractive to us, less like a never-ending casino trip, then we won't find us pulling our smartphones out all the time. So the rule is to make your phone as boring as possible. I recommend to remove everything addictive and entertaining from your smartphone. Make it as plain as possible so that it only contains the basic features that you really need. Delete all social media apps, mobile games, news apps, as these are literally inviting you to always click on them and spend hours and hours on ends using them. But that doesn't mean that you have to stop using these services altogether. You just want to avoid carrying them with you all the time. You could use social media instead from your computer, download mobile games on your tablet, you read the news on your PC or directly buy your newspaper. So the next rule 
is to make using your phone as difficult as possible. You, you want to create some form of friction between you and your smartphone so that even when you decide to use social media or something like this, you literally can't directly get that dopamine hit but have to wait a few moments. And one great way to do this is to always keep your phone deactivated so to always have it turned off. And always just boot it so turn it on when you actually want to do something. After you're finished, you turn it off again so that always when you want to do something, you have to wait a couple of minutes to get that dopamine hit, which creates a real friction between you and your device. Alternatively, you could make entering your device harder. Instead of a quick fingerprint or a face scan, you could use an absurdly long password, which would always require a couple of moments for you to enter your device. Another effective way would be to deinstall apps after you have used them. If you, for example, cannot live without Instagram, why not deinstall it every time after you've used it? Do this, you always have to go to the App Store first, download it again, wait, type in your account data and so on before you can finally scroll social media and again it you create some more friction. Last but not least, you could try something more radical. I think both Android and iOS have a certain feature where you can create an app timer where you tell your device that you can use YouTube for example only one hour every day and after that your smartphone will block the app for the rest of the day so that you have to wait until tomorrow. So. Rule number four is to make it unsatisfying. So we now try to make our phones less present in our lives, less attractive to use and harder for us to actually use. But finally, we want to make it even literally uncomfortable. And the logic behind this is obvious, I guess. So a very popular way is to activate the grayscale on your device in your settings so that your phone always shows everything in black and white, which is simply kind of boring and uncomfortable to use all the time. Additionally, you can make it harder to forget about your actual screen time and almost make you feel a bit guilty by placing a huge screen time widget right in the front of your home screen. And you can even activate app time counters so you will always see in the upper corner how much time you already spent on the app. So if all of this doesn't help, you can even go a step further. Another way is to make your phone less visually appealing. Many years ago, phones rather looked a bit rough, to say at least. But today your phone is bright and colorful, inviting you to spend as much time on it as possible. And if you, for example, set your background to black and install a so-called simple launch, only text and no icons and colors, then using your phone is as enjoyable to most people like skimming through an old phone book. So tell me which of these tips did you find helpful or which one did you like? And if you liked the video, make sure to subscribe and I hope to see you in the next video. Bye!